Oh, it's you. Yeah, hi. And I guess welcome to my channel, Hardware AI. It's been a long time. How have you been? Hmm, fine. Really busy, actually. Getting master's degree, working, making toasters talk, etc, etc. And, uh, you? Good. The important thing is you're back. So there's nothing to stop us from making science. We've got a lot to do. A while ago, in my job Slack channel, one of my co-workers said, yeah, this morning I was just thinking how much I miss my toaster having AI. And this gave me an idea. How about making his wish come true and put the conversational AI into a toaster? Well, I could at least try it and see how close can I get to it. I already have a toaster, which I bought a second hand shop when moving to a new apartment for 6 euro, and uh, what do I have to lose? My first attempt at creating synthetic dataset was using ChatGPT. The quality was really good, although there were still some problems with uh, steering it uh, in the right direction, but the speed of the dataset generation was pretty slow. I didn't want to use the API since I wanted to keep the, at least the dataset generation part of the project free. And not long before starting working on the project, Llama was released and C++ wrapper for it was going viral, no kind of viral. After a few days of experimenting and uh, cursing, I managed to find the model and Python wrapper for Llama CPP, Python bindings, uh, that worked well and produced sensible results fast enough. I instructed it to create dialects between a user and a toaster, to use dark humor for the toaster replies, and to call the user meatbag. Here are some samples from the dataset. As every synthetic dataset, it's not perfect and it can be quite noisy. But with enough data, it looked like it could be used to train a much smaller model uh, to impersonate a toaster with the character of HK47. You hear that meatbag? I will be back. So the next step was actually taking this data and training a model. Knowing that later I want to put this model to an embedded device, I wanted the model training code to be as simple as possible. To be able to debug easier when something inevitably goes wrong down the line. My starting point was text generation with a miniature GPT tutorial, which had simple pre-processing pipeline for IMDb movie, a database review generation, and a transformer decoder implementation, together with token and position embedding layer implementation. I logged my many, many, many experiments to weights and biases dashboard, which really helped me with the version control. Otherwise, I would be completely lost in the final version, final version 1.0, this one really, really final version, etc. I'll talk about my findings from these experiments a bit later, towards the end of the video. So, after hundreds of different tweaks, I end up with two models. Slightly larger, 1,400,000, uh, around this many parameters and a micro model with uh, slightly over 650 parameters, which would produce output like this. Clearly, larger model is more coherent and it's mostly usable for what we want it um, to behave like. While smaller, a smaller model does not make much sense a lot of the time. And important thing to note here is that I use shared layers for transformer decoder. That's a trick I borrowed from Albert model. 
uh, the number of parameters does not equal the number of max. In plain words, the model will have more computation required during inference or training for that matter than the number of parameters. But shared weights help us to keep the size of the model down, which is useful for an embedded, for an embedded device. After the models are trained, it's time to convert them to TensorFlow Lite format for more efficient standalone inference on our target device. While um, converting to Float32, the uh, TF Lite model was successful from get-go. Uh, quantizing the models to integer 8, um, even without quantizing inputs and outputs of the model, it uh, completely trashed the performance. You can see the results here. Fun. So, there are two ways forward from there. It's a QAT or quantization aware training, which theoretically would allow us to uh, fully quantize the model and keep good accuracy, or selective quantization of layers or operations of the model. There is a way with new quantization debugger to check which layers have the highest quantization error, possibly, and skip quantizing either certain layers or operations in the model. It's really quite neat and uh, it's a new feature in TensorFlow, uh, the quantization debugger, and it turned out that it turned out that uh, quantization aware training is quite complicated since the model had custom layers which um, needed quantization configs specified for them. In the end, it was more of a trial and error procedure, but I found that skipping add multiply and softmax operations when quantizing the model um, in other words leaving these operations as float32 uh, allows to preserve the accuracy of the model and the trade-off here was about 100 kilobytes um, not great not terrible but need more research to deploy model on raspberry pi 4 i would also need a tokenizer working on the device to encode user input and decode the model output. During training, I used Keras NLP package, but internally it relies on TensorFlow text, which is not available as pre-built will for Arch64. I did not fancy compiling it from source. I actually tried it recently on my Mac M1 and it did not go far. Oh well. So I checked uh, if WordPiece tokenizer that I used um, if the same tokenizer from Hugging Face produces the same result if initialized with the same vocabulary file. And it turned out it does, all without extra heavy dependencies like TensorFlow text. And here it is. I'm fine, thanks. It's a lovely day outside. The sun is shining and the birds are chirping. Sure thing. I'm always happy to oblige. Toasty. I can. My poetry is toasting bread and I'll be happy to oblige. Of course. What kind of bread would you like? I'm afraid I can't make bread. Toasting bread, toasting, toasting, toasting bread. I know, I was totally overselling it in the thumbnail of the video, but I figured that this would be a nice starting point for the first video. 
Before, I used to be a bit of perfectionist, trying to have a whole project completed. But sometimes, just like in this case, it would take a long time. And uh, in the end, it's not only the results, but the journey also could be interesting and useful. Well, enough of me blabbering about my life lessons. Maybe I'll make a podcast about that or something. What I want to try immediately after finishing this video and publishing it is uh, to bolt down uh, to what I already have an off-the-shelf uh, STT, speech-to-text solution, uh, perhaps fine-tune it on uh, to the vocabulary I have, but that's optional. And um, this way I can have proper conversation with the toaster and make a cool video of that. Uh, then use Edge Impulse, new feature, bring your own model to port this model to a more or less powerful microcontroller. That is going to be quite a big challenge, but the model porting tool already showed me uh, that I'm two operations away from being able to run this model on TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers. There are some other ideas I want to try on improving the model coherency side which I will cover also in later videos. Now, if you'd like to know more and um, like to get into the nitty gritty details, then here are some important takeaways from my experiments. Embedding size and vocabulary size influence model performance and size um, a lot. Since working on relatively constrained vocabulary, i chosen to train a word piece tokenizer on a concatenated corpus of soda dataset and my own toaster dataset with maximum size of uh, 1,596 tokens. For embedding size, I chose the middle ground of 128. 64 lowered accuracy too much, while 256 made the model too large. I'm sure there is still a lot of space for optimization here from running automated grid or random search on parameters to find the best combination, to using more advanced embeddings, such as uh, QR embedding. That one, actually, I tried it and it worked pretty well, but later I ran into difficulties converting the model to TF Lite, so there are some, there's some things unsupported here. So for the choice of tokenizer, by tokenizer, which basically transforms the characters into their byte representation is very lucrative option to hear. It makes encoding and decoding on a device a piece of cake and also leads to very small vocabulary. 256 is enough to cover everything. However, the unmodified and even slightly larger model was not able to learn long-term dependencies in the corpus. In other words, it would learn the words and some shorter phrases, but would fail to make coherent sentences, much more often than the word piece tokenizer. After checking a bit on ongoing research on tokenizerless models, uh, they use modified training objective, that's the case with BYT5, or additional modules before transformer blocks such as gradient-based subword tokenization module in a charformer model. Would be interesting to try too, although at least for the second one, unsupported operations and board quantization is still concerned. Pre-training matters quite a lot uh, for obtaining low perplexity scores and hence a more coherent model. With enough time and compute, uh, the exact choice of dataset probably does not matter, um, as long as it's large enough. If you're not in the big tech though, training on a huge data set uh, can take either very long time or be expensive if you're using cloud TPUs or GPUs for that. I use Colab TPUs and I was experimenting with smaller data sets for pre-training, such as SimpleBooks 92, that's 92 million tokens, and Soda, which is um, an even larger um, conversational, specifically uh, even larger conversational data set. The results from pre-training on SODA for 25 epochs, uh, which took about 7 hours on uh, TPUs, 
or much better than with simple books, um, guessing because the vocabulary was closer. Okay, cool. So the toaster saga will continue in the next episodes. Meanwhile, like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.